In this video, we're going to look at running a chi-squared test and interpreting the result when assumptions are not violated. Now, a chi-squared test is a non-parametric test, and that just means that both of the variables we're going to use are not normally distributed. They're not continuous, they're not scale. Um, specifically, they're nominal variables. So I have here gender and smoking status, and both of these are nominal categorical variables. Now, a chi-square test looks to see if there's an association between these two. You can also express it as a test of independence. So, for example, is smoking status independent from gender? Now, to run a chi-square test, we need to go to Analyze, Descriptives, and Crosstabs. Move one variable to the row and one to the column. If you go to the Cells button, we're going to tick on expected count. Now, if you want to see more about expected count, have a look at the video on cross tabs. Click continue. And then click on the statistics button. We're running the chi-square test. Now, the chi-square test is only going to tell us if there's a significant association, but it doesn't give us an indication of strength of the relationship. So for that, we're going to use an effect size, either phi or Kramer's V. Click continue. And then OK. Here's the output for our chi-squared test that we just ran. Our second table here is our cross-tabulation table. And you can see we have count, which is how many we observed in our sample, so 10 non-smoking males. And we also have something called expected count. Now this is what we would expect to observe if there was no association between gender and smoking status. So I would have expected there to be about seven non-smoking males, about seven not smoking males, about five non-smoking females, and about six smoking females, if there was no relationship um, between these two variables. Now the chi-square test is trying to establish if these two numbers are different enough to justify saying that there is a significant relationship between gender and smoking status. So we're going to look down here at our table. Before we read our chi-squared value and p-value, we need to look down at the bottom of the table to see if it, our assumption has been broken. And you see it says 0%. If this value is more than 20%, then that means we violated one of the assumptions and we need to read a different value. But in our case, none of our cells have expected count less than 5. So these are our expected counts. All of them are bigger than 5. Um, so we've not violated any assumptions. So we're going to go ahead and read off the Pearson chi-squared value which is 6.997 with one degree of freedom, and our p-value, which is under the asymptotic sig column of 0 0.008. Now, just like with all other statistical tests, we're comparing our p-value to our alpha value. Now, my alpha value is 0 0.05, but make sure to compare yours to your alpha value, which may be 0 0.01. Now, if this p-value is less than 0 0.05, it means our result is statistically significant. So in other words, we're going to reject our H0 and accept our alternate hypothesis to conclude there is a significant relationship between gender and smoking status. Another way to phrase that is to say smoking status is not independent from gender. In other words, it's dependent upon your gender. So whether you're male or female will affect whether or not you're a smoker or a non-smoker. Now, if this value is bigger than your alpha value, then you need to accept your null hypothesis. And the null for a chi-square test says there is no relationship between the two variables. Now, because my association is significant, I'm going to go down here to my phi and Kramer's V table to determine how big of an effect gender has on smoking status. And that's under the value column. Now, if your table is two by two, which ours is. I've got two categories here and two categories at the top. I'm going to read my phi value. If your table is bigger than two by two, so in other words, one of your variables has at least more than two, so three or more, you're going to read your Kramer's V value. Now, I recommend that you have a look at your lecture notes to see what cutoff points you should use or any statistics textbook that's been recommended in your course or module. I'm going to use some values that are quoted in Julie Pallant's 
SPSS survival guide and a value of 0.529 would be a large effect. So gender is having a large significant effect on smoking status. If you want to see how to interpret a result where our assumptions are broken, have a look at my video chi-squared tests plus assumptions violated.